Hi everyone. In this video I will be showing you how to make chrome alum crystals. Chrome alum being a double salt between aluminum sulfate and chromium alum. For this experiment you will need distilled water, a cup or beaker, a pin uh, to hang over your beaker if you plan to make a single crystal, thread also for that same reason. I don't really plan to use this in this video however you could if you are going the single crystal growth. Here I have aluminum sulfate. I bought it online uh, for about $5 a pound from Jacquard. Here we have chromium alum given to me by a friend of mine. Uh, I'll put his link in the description, though you probably know him more than you know me. You'll also need, it's optional, but it's really preferential to have, is a laboratory grade scale. This laboratory scale is to measure out your mass of the crystal that you plan to grow. However, you can really just eyeball these things if you want to. Before we get started with the experiment, though, I need to talk a little bit about the safety of using these chemicals. Danger, Will Robinson! Danger! No, Will Robinson! Danger! This experiment contains compounds that are mildly toxic. Do not perform them without proper safety procedures in place. This means ensuring that you understand all the risks involved, and you have properly looked up the MSDS or material safety data sheets of all chemicals that you use in this procedure. First, we will need to weigh out 100 grams of alum, and then we will need to add 12 grams of chromium alum into this. This will actually give the crystals a little bit of a purple color, but not too dark. The two salts will then need to be dissolved in about 400 milliliters of very, very hot water. This means that you will need to heat up the water with something like a microwave prior to the addition. Once everything is dissolved, we can actually put our beaker aside for about two days, and this will allow all the excess salt that you've added in to form onto a bottom layer of seed crystals. These seed crystals will then need to be separated out from your solution. Your seed crystals will be the place where your larger crystals will grow from. Your extra solute will form onto these seed crystals forming much larger crystals. So it is very important that your seed crystals are without flaws. This means choosing one that is large but also is very beautiful to yourself. I let my crystal solution sit for about four days and this is what I came back to. A large polycrystalline mass in the bottom of my beaker. Now you can see that it actually started to form to my beaker so if I were to repeat this experiment, I would make sure that I chose a much larger uh, vessel for my seed crystals to form onto, or I would actually pick out my seed crystals and use them, rather than just letting the entire crystalline mass sit in the bottom of the container. If you plan to allow your solution to sit for much longer, it is recommended that about every two weeks you go through and filter your solution to remove any excess seed crystals that may have formed on the bottom of your container. This means simply running your current solution through a coffee filter and allowing gravity to separate the solid and the liquid. For some reason, my alum that I acquired from Jacquard was very impure. It seemed to nucleate, uh, form, uh, large crystalline masses too quickly. This means that the crystals are going to be cloudier than what they would normally be. I plan to redo this experiment at a later date, attempting to actually form a single crystalline mass, which is very beautiful. But this one is arguably just as beautiful. I have no idea what this large brown mass at the bottom of the crystal is, that which formed on the bottom of the container must have been some impurity that was left behind, but your guess is as good as mine. It is very important you wear gloves at this time. Now, what I've done is I've dumped out the crystalline mass onto a paper plate, and I'm simply desiccating the surface with a paper towel. Because this crystal is water-soluble, it will react with water in the air. So once you desiccate it, it is a race against time to protect the coating and ensure that no further destruction happens to the surface. What I'm doing now is adding clear nail polish to this crystal. It won't react with the chemical inside, and it will actually keep water from touching it. Now, because I have such a large crystalline mass, I actually just dumped it onto the crystal. This is not advisable on small crystals as every bit of nail polish that you add actually destroys the outside of the crystal. 
Uh, however, this was a very low quality crystal compared to what I'd actually like to see, so it really didn't matter too much. What I recommend when varnishing your crystal surface is to perform one light coat on the surface and a secondary coat to ensure that you get the entire surface of the crystal. Any exposed surface will degrade over time and this is not preferential if you want to keep this. For the rest of the video I think I'll just play the clip of me uh, varnishing the surface of this crystal and I'll talk directly to you with maybe a little bit of music in the background just to lighten it up. So recently I've hit around 300, almost 400 subscribers and I'm very, very grateful. I'm really happy with this and uh, with everything that's happened with my channel. I've started this little channel to get people interested in science and to do a little bit of fun experiments and have a little bit of goof off with a you know, chemistry degree, see what fun I can have and just all around teach people about science and math and physics. I don't know if uh, this will get large or if the channel will get much larger, but thank you for subscribing. Every subscription, every like, every comment, it, it means a lot to me. And I, I know a lot of people will say that on their YouTube channel, and I don't know, you know, who you've seen in the past, um, if it sounds genuine, but coming from a creator's point of view, it is very, very nice to see this happen. Um, this video was a little bit weird uh, because a lot of my uh, because a lot of my uh, clips have been gone. They they, they went kaput. Um, a few of the files corrupted. I honestly have no idea what happened. Um, however, I plan to produce the potassium ferrocyanide crystal. Um, very very shortly and I know that's probably why a lot of you subscribed is to see that however I figure you'll be able to see this one this week and maybe the potassium ferrocyanide next week um, you know I, I really cannot express to you in words how, how grateful I am uh, for this entire thing to have blown up I, I went from 80 subscribers a month ago to this and it is crazy um, so again thank you very much for subscribing uh, if you've been subscribed thank you for keeping subscribed and I really hope uh, you enjoy this channel let me know what you think down in the comments below let me know if you think I did a good job if you think I do a bad job uh, tweets anything you'd like to see any questions you have I'd love some interaction um, so yeah thank you all for subscribing really thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video maybe give it a like maybe subscribe if you're not already subscribed share it to all your friends or do share it to no one, it, it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, I really want to say thank you very much for being here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next week.